This episode of Texilla is sponsored by NVIDIA, Domain.com, and the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. Coming up on today's show, are you fed up with the iPhone? Let's take a look at Nokia's legendary N95. Remote desktop, it's a great way to do some tech support without actually having to be there. And free, we loves us free software. So quit weeping over that Phelps action figure, wipe off those tears, and get ready, because Techzilla starts now. Welcome to Techzilla, I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. We've got an epic show lined up for you today, but before we begin, have, have you been watching the Olympics? I have indeed. What have you been watching in the Olympics? Oh man, so this is the first year that I think I've had the opportunity to watch the Olympics in stunning HD. It's amazing. So that's amazing. been pretty awesome. It makes a whole world of difference. And, especially uh, the swimmers. You get right up in there, especially the swimmers. Swimmers look good in HD? Yes, the swimmers look very good in HD. Any particular swimmer look particularly good in HD? I like me some Michael Phelps. Really? Like me some Michael Phelps. Looking I won't good. I won't deny it. <laughs> he is a grand specimen of a human being. He's a good looking and, man. Um, he's a good looking man. I can I can respect that. Clean cut. Clean cut, all American dude. Pulled it together after that little incident a few years ago. Yeah, so anyhow, um, it's been awesome. I love the gymnastics too. That's one of my favorite events. Oh, gymnastics this year have been insane. And what's yeah. with the twelve year olds? Um, I know, they're so tiny. They look like little tiny ladies just bouncing around all over the place. They say they're sixteen though. Yeah. Do you believe it? You know what? We've actually we've got a you know the, you know, the woman competing from Germany who's 33. So yeah. why not some 16 year olds that look 11? It's true. I mean, she looks really young also, and yeah. she's over 30. Anyhow, totally Which off topic. Which is practically ancient. It's I've been having. As old as I am. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been having a blast watching it. So I hope you guys have been enjoying it as well. The 4x100 relay was amazing freestyle relay. But speaking of worldwide relations, a lot of you outside of the United States are miffed, angry pissed off that you cannot enter our badass monster gaming PC giveaway because you don't reside in the United States. Unfortunately, different countries have different rules about giveaways and related contests. That's not an issue if it's a t-shirt or something relatively inexpensive, right. but the price of a PC puts it well into the we have to get the lawyers and figure out the fine print for the bureaucrats and the trade and the taxes and the weasels and the anger. And I apologize, but unless we have the money and resources to do a different contest for each and every country, and literally it has to be a contest set up for each individual country according to the basically national laws, and we just don't have the kind of resources yeah. to set that up. It is for the United States only. We haven't My opened apologies. up our uh, international offices yet. Yeah. You know, all our we have we have many of them about to open. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Here's all the over the place. It, it could literally take a hundred and sixty different individual documents and briefs creating the contest for each of the hundred and sixty odd countries that regularly show up in the Texilla audience. Um, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. But I'm heading to the Podcast Expo, the new media expo coming up in Vegas. You're going to be at the Double Down, 6 yes. p.m. on Friday? 6 p.m. on Friday. 6 p.m. on Friday. Mm -hmm. A little early for most folks at the Double Down. Double Down Saloon, 4640. Paradise Boulevard, I believe. I usually walk there from over at the Hard Rock. <laughs> I'm stone sober, and it's my favorite place to hang out in Las Vegas, so I'm officially jealous. They have great music. They have an amazing jukebox, punk rock off the wall, murals on the wall, It'll and a pony, yeah, a pony ride. A pony ride? A pony ride. Oh my God, ponies! Um, <laughs> Zomg, pony. I also heard that they have some kind of bacon, like uh, bacon teeny. Bacon teeny. Yes. I heard that from. If you're gonna have the bacon teeny, Vegas in the chat room. I highly recommend the twenty dollar puke insurance because if you puke in the double down, you are responsible for cleaning it up. Really? So if you're that kind oh, of person. Oh man, that's intense. It's this is not a you know this is not a lightweight place. It's yeah, but place. I'm bringing I'm bringing this little buddy with me, this Ooh. Belkin Ghost Studio, record, share, play. We had some interest in that in the audience. You guys asked us yeah. to review it. So Veronica is going to get her audio device. geek on. I'm going to, uh, I don't know what podcast I'm going to record on it, but I'll do some, I'll think of something. Oh, maybe people. we'll do a special sword and laser because Tom Merritt will be there with me too. I like that thought. And so that'll be fun. That'll give what us an is opportunity. Sword and, laser? sword and laser is my science fiction and fantasy book club that I host with Tom Merritt of CNET TV fame. Where can people find this? Swordandlaser.com. Oh, I like this little uh, <laughs> pimping my own other podcast. Doesn't this is exciting. Good? Yeah, so this one could be actually be pretty good. It's got, a, you know, you can plug an XLR right into the top well, basically, of it, two of them. You record to your iPod with it. Oh, sick. Will it work with iPhone? Well, you're going to find out. Okay, well, <laughs> they often don't. Things that work for the iPod hardly ever work for the iPhone, or so they say. Bitter much? It's worth trying. Well, shall we start helping people? I think we should. <laughs> 
All right, the first set of emails come as a response to last week's answer to a viewer who wanted to get a replacement or alternative way to install Windows since his Dell XP install disk was all scratched. The first one comes from Jeff, who writes in, You guys didn't sound aware of this, but Dell does not charge for a replacement OS disk regardless of warranty status. And uh, Jeff's email was followed by an email from Bill who states, also, Dell does not charge you for replacement OS disks. I know this because I work for them. Assuming you're under warranty, you can just call and say that the disk you have doesn't work or that you lost the disks. And that's it. And if you're out of warranty, you can still call to get them, but then approval is required and it makes things a little harder. That's really cool. That is cool. I've been buying Dell products for years and I have never actually seen that before. See, I would I've just assume that, that that was like okay. Because you know, when you lose a pair of pants, you call the Gap and they give them back to you or wherever you buy pants. But it's different. It's software. It's software. like some So when you eat that fruit, oh, you call it the supermarket and be like, it's I lost my grapefruit. It's not the same. That's it's like a same. physical object. Well, the disc <laughs> is also a physical object. Frack! <laughs> Foiled again by Patrick it is, Norton. It is great that some PC vendors are going to go the extra mile to give you those replacement discs, and it makes life a lot easier. Because I don't, I've, I've had trouble getting, you know, even purchasing replacement parts from company, much less, you know, getting stuff for free. I understand, but I mean, if it's something where they can trace like an install, right. then it's a little bit different. I, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, because if they I, tell, if you're ordering disc and lying like iTunes, that you lost it and it's you know, giving it to other people, iTunes, I mean, they can check. You download it. You own that copy if you lose it. You there don't actually, get it there back. is a chance. There sometimes, actually, I, uh, Apple's good about that, but like, it's they're never sometimes good about time. that. Sometimes. It's, it's like really specific cases right. that you need to be involved in. I don't even know how it would work. I mean, bring a puppy and and a screaming child and look at them with the big <laughs> teary. Go do right the doe eyes. Do the doe eyes. Do the doe eyes. That face. That'll work. In any case, if any of you out there know policies regarding replacement discs, good or bad, we're curious. Let us know. Texilla at revision3.com. You know what? What? Creative, for years, you couldn't get the basic install drivers for their hardware off of their website. You had to have the original installation disk. Yeah, that used to drive me insane. Not a good, not a good example. No. All right, let's cut to a brief sponsor break. We want to take a moment now for an important message by the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration who want to remind you about the dangers of driving while under the influence of alcohol. In 2006, 13,470 people were killed in alcohol-impaired driving crashes. These fatalities accounted for 32% of the total motor vehicle traffic fatalities in the United States. But it's not just automobile drivers that need to be aware. Alcohol also accounts for a significant number of motorcycle rider fatalities. The age group of 30 to 39 and 40 to 49 are those with the highest rates of alcohol involvement for motorcycle riders killed in fatal crashes. So if you're planning to drink alcohol with a friend, please designate a sober driver before going out and give that person your keys. And remember, violators often face jail time, the loss of their driver's license, higher insurance rates, and dozens of other unanticipated expenses from attorney fees, other fines and court costs, towing and repairs, lost time at work, etc. So be smart and stay safe. Don't drink and drive. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week's pick, SciSoft Sandra Light. If you want a comprehensive diagnostic and benchmark tool for your brand spank a new or definitely used and beat up PC, you should check out SciSoft Sandra Light. This snazzy tool provides detailed info about the various systems and subsystems in your PC. Want to know what kind of processor you have and what stepping it is? Just go to the hardware tab and select processors. In a moment or two, you'll get an exhaustive overview of the heart of your machine, including info on speed, cache size, manufacturer, voltage rating, and dozens of useful tidbits of information. Maybe you're curious about how the new RAM you just upgraded your machine with stacks up on the performance scale. Click benchmarks and memory bandwidth, select the reference chipset and memory you want to compare your system to, and hit the run button. In a few moments, you'll get a nice chart of where your machine stands in performance rankings. Of course, that's not all. You also have access to a multitude of diagnostic tools and other benchmarks to give you a better idea of what kind of machine you're running and advice on how to improve its performance. So if you're serious about building your own PCs and want to make them the ultimate performance Performers, make sure SciSoft Sandra Light is part of your post build install. It's not like it's going to cost you anything. All right, our next email comes from Chuck, and Chuck wants to know I'm in the market for a new phone and I'm torn between the N95 and the iPhone. How do the two compare with regards to battery life, data connectivity, GPS, text entry, and desktop integration under Mac OS X? So that's not Chuck from Chuck, Chuck, no, Chuck. But it is our Chuck. Up Chuck. Chuck. I shouldn't say that, he, he controls everything. Chuck. <laughs> we'll be in trouble. Not good. 
I guess we should probably answer his question, though. That would be important. If only there were some kind of tech gadget comparison show where the knowledgeable host has a side-by-side -side, like look at two devices. <coughs> That would be really, um, that would be convenient. Well, there used to be one. No. No, there still is one. Just not with you anymore. Anyhow, that was a long time ago, uh, <laughs> well before the iPhone 3G came out. Not to mention 3G support in the N95. A lot has changed since then. The iPhone obviously now has 3G, but that makes the battery life a hell of a lot shorter. Pardon my French. Since we talk about the iPhone all the time, let's take a closer look at the N95. And you spent some time with it. Uh, yeah, actually, a lot of folks that aren't living the Crackberry lifestyle consider the N95 to be the ultimate smartphone. It's a slider phone. You slide up for the keypad, you slide down for the media controls. It runs Symbian OS, and it's on a 2.8-inch screen. Not a touch screen, and it's a lot smaller, I think, than the iPhone's 3.5-inch screen. Three quarters of an inch is a lot, or I should say seven tenths of an inch at that scale. It does have real GPS built in, and a, wait for it, please, wait for it so you can mock the iPhone owners around you. A 5-megapixel camera with a flash, that can also do 640 by 480 video. Video. Do you hear the iPhone whining? It just got its ass kicked. No. Multimedia features include MP3, <laughs> WMA, Real Audio, SPDS MIDI, AAC, EAAC, MIDI, AMR, <laughs> MIDI, because you know, you got to have those ringtones, AMR and M4A. And it's got some tremendous video support, built in Wi Fi, UMTS, HSDPA, or Edge, depending on the carrier. Estimated 3.5 hours talk time, CDMA, 5 hours talk time, GSM. I think those are a little pushed, stretched, estimated, if you will, because mm. it, it feels like a lot less on the street. There's a built-in accelerometer just like the iPhone. Some folks think it feels kind of cheap, especially given the price. The OS tends to be a tad sluggish, and you're probably going to be spending close to $600 to buy one unlocked. Yeah, seriously, the main advantage to that right. device, in my opinion anyway, is the, uh, is the camera. I mean, five megapixels on a phone is a pretty big deal, and the iPhone still can't do video, at least legit style. Correct. I've heard of it happening, but it's not going to be a feature anytime soon. It requires jailbreaking and programs, yeah. and the videos of meh quality anyway. Uh, and Chuck's main question is about interoperability with OS X, and yeah, it'll sync just fine with your Mac, so that shouldn't be an issue at all. It's Symbium, not Windows, Mobile, or Pocket PC. Although Symbian, there finally are some decent tools for, for Windows Mobile on the Mac, and yeah, if you're curious but, you know, about that, all still... two of you other than me and, and Ron, from iFanboy. Yeah, and uh, uh, Nokia email. actually, they have that um, multimedia transfer software mm -hmm. that can sync with iPhoto and iTunes. So yeah. that's very convenient if you're looking to do something like that. I don't think it's as elegant in its interactions with OS X as the iPhone is going to be. I don't think the applications work together as well as they do in the iPhone. Um, but that's just me. The, the camera, if you want the photo, if you want the video, uh, if you, you hate the iPhone, this is a definite alternative. It just tends to be expensive. It's also a big thing, too, because a lot of people don't like the keyboard on the mm -hmm. iPhone still. So, you it's know, true. people will still say that they prefer to have the, uh, the push buttons, the kind of haptic feedback. It's not haptic because it would be flat. If it was haptic, it would be screen. Well, this, yeah, haptic. Anyhow, I'm more. babbling to myself incoherently. Once again, if you like buttons with if your you like the buttons, them, you'll like the N95. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time we took another video email. Take it away, Desra. Hi, Patrick and Veronica. My name's Desra. I'm building a desktop PC for my in-laws, and I'm looking for some software to add that'll let me do remote tech support for them. Something so, if they have a problem, I won't have to drive all the way over there to fix it. Thanks a lot for any suggestions, and cheap would be good. All right, so what Des was looking for is remote administration software. This is a way to control another computer remotely from the machine you're sitting at. It's like the stuff in corporate IT environments. It's been there the forever. Stuff, eh? The stuff. It's actually been, people have been using it at home for a long time too. Windows has remote desktop assistance and XP and Vista. Vista can remote assistance and XP machine, but not the other way around. Right, and a more powerful is uh, the Windows remote desktop connection, Say also that included. Three times fast. Say that, yeah. Windows Sorry. remote desktop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> So anyhow, that's also meant for a remote environment, the Windows Desktop Connection. Remote Desktop Connection. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Damn you, Patrick. I who's going to jinx you? You were saying it fine. Yeah, there's limitations on what you can connect to. For Vista users, you cannot remote connect to a machine running Vista Starter, Vista Home Basic, Vista Home Basic N, or Home Premium. I.e. the cheap seats. The cheap seats. <laughs> <laughs> so just the Business Enterprise and Ultimate Editions. XP can only connect to XP Pro, and again, no Vista support, unfortunately. 
Yeah, so both work, but really involve setup process that you'd have to go through. So it could be kind of intimidating. Yeah, if your parents are already having a hard time dealing with something going mm -hmm. on in your computer, they're probably not going to be too keen on the idea of having to set all this stuff up. Mm -hmm. uh, but the upside is it's already installed. You just have to kind of figure out how to use it. It's there. It's free. It mm -hmm. may cost you your relationship with your cousin trying to get it running. <laughs> um, better solution, we think, something like VNC, virtual network computing. It's also free and requires an installation on the target and the client machines. Downside for this one, it's a little confusing for people unfamiliar with setting up a computer network and it needs a direct IP address. Oh. So this can get complicated when you're using, well, it pretty much for everybody on the planet who's using a dynamically assigned IP, especially if it's behind a home router, because you got to like tell somebody, okay, type in 192.168.1.1, you're going to type in admin, admin, and I'll go to this tab and click this, and that's your IP address. And by that time, one of you has probably jumped off the nearest bridge. Stabbing yourself in the eye with forks is what I imagine. Uh, the best solution for someone who isn't extremely tech savvy is uh, something like go to my PC, yeah. which is something I've looked at for a long time and I've never actually used until today. It's bomb proof. It's simple. It's, it's awesome. easy. It just costs money. 20 bucks a month or $180 a year. This, this basically allowed a friend of mine to start helping his parents with tech support again mm -hmm. because he basically went to a don't call me I'll do it next time I travel to your house. <laughs> it's really cool to run cross-platform. Actually, you have it. You have an OS 10 machine. You're going to connect to an XP machine. Correct. Fire it up. All right. Let's see this. So here's the login page. You are going to need a high-speed internet name is Roger connection, Chang. web support, a web browser, and it has to have Java support built into it. Basically, just log into the GoToMyPC website with login and password, which Veronica has just done. Now, Hellboy oh PC. That can't be Roger. <laughs> Hellboy everything. Hellboy tattoo in his soul. So um, some of the things aren't going to show up on the remote machine. Booyah. The wallpaper, the speed's a little slow when you're using it, but check it out. I just thought his desktop was black like his soul. No, no, okay. his desktop is not black like his soul. So we can do all sorts of stuff. We can go into the start menu, and we can futz around with his pictures and his music, but, you know, that's kind of probably not the stuff that your parents are looking for you to do. Grandpa's been downloading what? I mean, you can run stuff, like run... Command, yeah, command lines. IP config. <laughs> Actually, don't type that in. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. And so. then, yeah, you can you can clean out stuff for them. You can Twitter under their names. It's just it's really like fun. being there using their keyboard and their mouse, except you're using your keyboard and your mouse. And exactly. And even though it costs money, it's worth it in saving your parents' sanity. Or at least saving your sanity. Saving both of your sanity. Yeah. yeah Invaluable. I, it's great if you have clients <laughs> that you don't want to travel to their business every time they, you know, trash a bunch of files, cousins friends, just tell them to get a go to my PC account and give you the access. Trust us. It's a lifesaver. Let's do something funny. Now, if you want to get your 15 seconds of internet fame, send us a video. All you need to do is record yourself in front of a video asking a question. No longer than 15 seconds. A 15 second question. Then upload that question to YouTube and email us a link to your video with video question in the subject line. Please no attachments, it upsets the email server. And as an added incentive, Veronica has one or two boxy invites left for those of you who send in a video question. So don't be shy, send us your video emails and you might just get yourself a free boxy invite for the alpha, because you know, alpha tastes better. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, the folks that help us bring the show to you. This time it's domain.com. I'm pleased to say that Domain.com is back supporting Techzilla and that they've put together an exclusive offer for the Techzilla community. Use the coupon code TECH1, that's T-E-K-1, when you're checking out for a 25% discount on domains, hosting, and more. For domains, that's 671 out the door. No gimmicks, no strings attached, no fine print. And then take 25% off Domain.com secure, reliable hosting plans. Whether you're looking to start up a blog or a new business, Domain.com's hosting plans will get you up and running. Type in coupon code TECH1 to save 25% on all Domain.com hosting plans. Do us a favor here at Techzilla. Support us by supporting them. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. Today's pick, browsershots.org. It's not a drinking site, I promise. If you work in web design, one of the biggest annoyances is testing your creation in many different browsers to see how your site is displayed. Because even though we're all on the same internets, the browser you're using can change the look and experience on a certain website. This is where browsershots.org comes in. 
Simply add the website in question into the field at the top and then select which browsers you'd like to test. There are a host of other options you can include, like screen size, and if you'd like Flash, Java, and JavaScript enabled or not. There are 90 volunteer computers involved with processing the requests, so sometimes there can be a bit of a queue to wait through after you add your site. But if you're just curious to see some discrepancies between browsers, add in a few of your favorites, which have probably already been tested and uploaded, to check them out. From Firefox to IE, Ice Weasel to Opera, you can see how your experience online differs from everyone else. All right, we got another V-mail loaded up and ready to play. This one comes from Thomas. Is there a tool I can use to get RSS feeds emailed to my email address whenever they update? Or better yet, is there some way to get updates from RSS feeds texted to my cell phone? Because as you know, sometimes you're just not around an internet connection. Thank you. Okay, Thomas, other than just using the mobile version of your favorite web-based RSS readers like Google Reader, there are several services that will send you your feeds directly to your phone or email. WebAlerts.com, that's web-alerts.com, will send you text messages. And it's oh, a free cool. service. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's At least free. You have unlimited text messages. Right, but then you have to pay like typical standard text messaging fees. Right. Or as they say, text standard text messaging fees apply. <laughs> Anyhow, see what you do is you enter in the RSS feed that you want texted to you, and they'll send you updates as they come. That's really cool. Yeah, and you don't have to log in or anything. It just kind of works. Just be careful if you have one of those feeds where you get an update every 15 seconds, 24-7. Yeah, seriously, that would be pretty, like my Twitter feed, for example. <laughs> Another service like that is called Pingy. I haven't tried that one out yet, but it looks pretty cool, very Web 2.0 in its design, as they tend to be these days. And if you'd rather have all your stuff sent to email, which I can kind of understand, but some of us use that seems email. like it would make things way more complicated because email would then be just overflowing. You'd have to make all sorts of certain filters and that kind of thing. Some people live in the email. People do live in the email. That's <laughs> true. SendMeRSS.com. Like I said, you don't have to sign up. It's totally free. Cool. You add the RSS feed and uh, and your email address, and then we'll send it to your inbox. That reminds me. I'm going to turn on I am. You're going to turn on I am yeah. so I don't kill you. Exactly. But I'm not even on I am now, so you but don't have to worry you about might it. Might be, and if I'm not ready, you'll be angry. Anyhow, I think that our viewers at home are very curious about the state of our badass monster gaming PC. We're on our third week of the Badass Gaming PC build, sponsored by NVIDIA here on the show. The past few weeks, we took a look at the parts and the assembly of the gaming beast, and today it's on to the games, or rather what they look like on this machine, and I am joined by, of course, the wonderful Roger Chang. Yes, we actually had to uh, slide out Pat so I could explain this fully since I actually <laughs> installed everything. Now, because we have the two NVIDIA 260s installed as SLI, we figured we'd try to get the really kind of, uh, you know, pedal to the metal games, ones that are going to really kind of max it out. So we picked Bioshock and Crisis because Crisis is literally the game that brings Just any machine yeah, yeah. To, to its knees. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Bioshock right up right now. Now, the thing is, Bioshock runs all right. Uh, running in DirectX 9, but it also supports DirectX 10, which is you know the newfangled Vista DX10 mode that everyone likes. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna run it right here now. It's running 19 by 1200, and as you can see, for the most part, if I can get out my chamber here, um, it's looking pretty good. In fact, it actually looks better than when I played it on my P, uh, my quad core, just running with a stock X. Now, this, X850. Is all, this is cranked out all the way, right? This is cranked out all the way, and as you can see, there's very little stutter, if, if any. Um, You're not doing much right then, but. Oops, here. Now I got a whacker. Hold on. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me while I whack her. While I while I uh, kill the enemy, um, and it's a really you know it's a really nice experience. Generally, on this game, as you get more and more, especially in the. Uh, on the uh, oh, on the graphic settings, it tends to stutter. Um, oh, I think I'm going to bite it in a minute here. Concentrate, man. It's vitally oh, important that you go. don't die. Now, how are we going to show it now that you're dead? Now, a lot of people say have said like, you know, it runs great on the 360, and you know, what can the PC offer? 19 by 12. I mean, that's what five times the the resolution, or four? Maybe it's four. Um, running on the. Uh, hold on. Sorry, I just. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. If only all these things in the video game weren't happening, you could easily tell us all about the gaming PC. Yes, well, as you can see, it's. Uh, well, all right, I give up playing the game and talking about it at the same time. <laughs> but uh, just to prove that we do have a max, I'm going to go over to the options here, and we're going to go to the graphics options. As you can see, 1920, 1920 by 1200. I literally have everything turned on except windowed mode, uh, Windows mm -hmm. mode. 
actually vert vertical sync if you want. Um, actually, I usually leave that turned off because you want to increase frame rates, and then if you tie it to a vertical sync, it tends to slow it down. Um, you look, it's at everything, and it still runs like butter. Yeah, it looked good to me. Um, but, you know, people say, what about Crisis? So let's swap out the game here. All right, so now we have Crisis, and actually brought up the, uh, the settings menu so you can see what we have it at. Right now in the advanced settings for the graphics, you can see on the screen, I literally have everything maxed out, either on high or in custom. And for the most part, I mean, it's pretty much all the way where it's supposed to be. The only thing I do not have is any aliasing quality maxed out. So maybe they'll let me uh, adjust that. Yes. There we go. Now let's click apply. Yes. So this is the opening of the game. This is where you kind of do the kind of jump out of the, the cargo plane as you try to infiltrate the enemy island stronghold. Of course, the game is based on the premise that you're wearing this. You're part of a special forces outfit, and you get these kind of super suits that give you either increased speed, stamina, resistance to trauma, like bullet wounds, or people clubbing you, uh, things like that. Pretty you much know, it's... everyday things. Really, it's just Far Cry. Um, <laughs> Oh, the loading progress is at 100, as you can see, and it's still taking forever to load. But hopefully, I have it at 16, you saw it said mm -hmm. everything maxed out. Let's see how bad it stutters or runs. It's a little shaky, but yeah. I literally have this maxed out where it used to bring other games out. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is really the benchmark for what they no. test gaming PCs on. I yeah. mean, that's like, you know how people make the joke, like, will it blend? This is the, the gaming equivalent, will it run Crisis? The, the general consensus is that no machine is ever going to run this game maxed out and run it Perfectly. smoothly. Yeah. It's always going to hiccup somewhere. So what people kind of do is after they build a PC, they try to see how far they can max out and then scale back from that. So, you know, so far it's actually not too bad. Yeah, it's a little herky, but not as bad as I would have imagined at... I mean, it's playable. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, if you, if you, you know, reduce your expectations, don't expect that you'll be playing this game exactly at this uh, uh, setting. I mean, if you drop it down to four or eight, it'll run fine. So it says a lot. I mean, so far it's passed pretty much every test I've thrown at it. And I'm quite happy. Um, one of the things that I do want to mention, however, is that we did get permission to actually toss in the two games with the uh, PC. Oh, sick. So nice. if you do, by perchance, you know, happen to win or, or, or uh, yeah, win the PC, you actually get these two games with it. So. That is fantastic. And as we said, we handpicked some amazing components and put together a badass gaming machine that will be given away to one lucky winner. The winner will be announced on episode 47 on August 23rd. Of course, you can't win if you don't enter, so if you want to enter your chance to win, surf on over to revision3.com slash badass giveaway and submit your name and email address. But that's not all. You can also win a chance to head out to Envision 2008 later this month in lovely San Jose, California. For more info, check out the link below, revision3.com slash envision tickets. Speaking of gaming, NVIDIA is hosting a three-day visual computing show, including three uninterrupted days of gaming, an attempt at a world record-breaking GeForce LAN party, the 2008 Electronic Sports World Cup, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash and prizes. Not to mention a whole slew of other events, including a live taping of Dig Nation, Go Kevin and Alex on August 26th at 6 p.m. Want to check it out? Go to www.envision2008.com to find out more and to register for early bird rates. Then mark your calendar and get yourself to San Jose, California, August 25th through 28th for 55 hours of jaw-dropping visual wonderment. Come one, come all, come game with Envision 2008. Huzzah! Huzzah! I don't know where that Ren Faire moment came from, but I think it's time <laughs> to tackle some more tough tech questions. I agree, as usual. Oh. I mean, really, what would happen if I said no? We'd probably do something else. You would just, like, have a snack? Ooh, I like that. Go thought. to a fancy party? All right, Veronica, are you up for some tough tech questions? I am indeed. So you're supposed to go no, and then we go to the snack thing. See, I'm so conditioned, I can't even say Too no. Late. It's a vacationer's worst nightmare. You come back from your trip only to find all of your photos gone. Gone. Sadly, we have an email today from a viewer with just that issue. Help! I recently got back from vacation when I tried to import my pictures from my Sony digital camera via memory card reader. Finder stopped responding. So I unplugged the memory card reader, plugged it in again, and now all my photos are corrupted. <gasps> The file size for the pictures is still over two megabytes, but there's nothing there. Is there any way I can get my photos back? I'm freaking out here, man. Help! Writes Umar. Wow. 
Well, since you mentioned that you were in Finder, it looks like you're obviously using a Mac. Thus, dispelling the rumor that Mac OS X never has any problems. You know, that makes me nervous because I always accidentally unplug cameras and OS card X gets readers. OS X And it says, whoa, wait, whoa wait, wait, there, wait, wait, whoa. Wait, you can hear it now. <gasps> Dude, don't do that. Doesn't like it. Yeah. Uh, Stellar Phoenix Photo Recovery, which is $39, should be able to help grab your photos off the card. Uh, data, re data, data, data Rescue 2 is data another Rescue popular two. Mac app that might be able to save your lost images, and you can find both of those on download.com. That one's free to try and $99 to buy, so it darn well better work. It's always good to investigate this stuff before you actually need it, because in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. there are software recovery tools out there that aren't maybe very good, but still cost you a lot of money just to try them. Or they do this tantalizing thing where they go, we're pretty sure you can give you these photos. And you go, oh my gosh, those photos. And then you pay them the incredible amount of money for their product. Because you're like, yeah. Like they show you the photos they could potentially be exactly. saving. I've seen that in a, in a recovery application. And then does it not work? No, no, no. Then you have to pay you to actually to pay the get the bucks. photos. That would be even meaner if they were like, here are the photos we could potentially save. And then they could Give us your save money. Them. And then it's like, ooh, well. About that, yeah, not so much. Then you get to drag them out in the supermarket parking lot and kick the you know what's. The trick here is not using the memory card just before. Basically, just don't touch the memory card until you have the software up and running. Just mm -hmm. like with any damaged drive, your photos are most likely still there, just the partition table. It's kind of like the map to your files that your operating system use has been damaged. What the photo recovery software does generally is scan the entire contents of the disk to figure out what's actually on there, and it kind of constructs its own version of the map to guide it to the pictures <laughs> for you. So it can tantalize you. Tantalize you. Tantalize. That's, That's almost awesome. a word in English. Almost. Uh, yeah. For you Windows <laughs> users out there, there's a host of programs that are also available. Virtual Lab Data Recovery is one that's very highly ranked on download and also has a free-to-try policy. It's only 40 bucks to buy, though, if you, you know. It's tauntware. That's cheaper than the other one. <laughs> it's tantalizing wear. Tauntware. Because, you know, it's that's like, look, I got this photo, but I need $40 if you want it. <sighs> if you're getting comfortable with, uh, getting your geek on, check out PhotoRec, a free open source file recovery tool. Heads up, most of these programs will even get data and images from cards that have been deleted, which could seriously be a lifesaver if you delete something by accident. This is true. Uh, I've done that before. Yeah, it kind of sucks. PhotoRec's also cool, especially with uh, like memory sticks, because it'll read one. It'll basically, it's it's also a drive image, uh, drive uh, uh, file recovery mm -hmm. tool, because it'll work with Mac file structures and all of the Windows file nice. structures, and quite a bit more free, open source, and available for the download. Very FDW. good. I think we have time for one more email. I hope so. One more email. Matt. This one comes to us from Matthew, and Matt writes us, help. SVCHost.exe is using up 100% of my CPU and over 100 megabytes of RAM. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I rebooted my computer several times, and it doesn't resolve. I can't kill the process because it would make my computer restart. So what do I do? I don't know. Sell it and get another computer. Just throw it out the window. Just kidding. Get this is so annoying, Matthew. SVCHost.exe is a generic name for any process that runs from a DLL, a DLL, which is not DHL. It's a dynamic link library, not a package shipping service. And they're used by everything, practically, or at least it seems that way, that runs on your system. Checking the processes labeled in the Windows Task Manager generally won't help much in finding out which app is related to which instance of SVCH host, because you'll often have a half dozen of them running. But if you open up a command window and type in in task list space slash SVC, you'll get a list of what's associated with that instance. Or in Vista, you can right click on an instance of SVC host.exe, select go to services, and you'll find out what app is running under that service, which can help you isolate things. Now, your particular problem, if you're lucky, is related to a problem with Microsoft Update that was cleared up in a patch for Windows XP Service Pack 2. Try disabling Microsoft Update by going to the Windows Update link in Internet Explorer, selecting Change Settings on the left, then running the Uninstall option at the bottom. This still allows automatic download of standard core Windows updates, but not for Office. This is not, I repeat, not the same as disabling all Windows updates in the control panel, which is generally a bad idea. We've used this fix on a number of computers in the past, and it's fixed the problem on them all. Now, got that done? Update to Service Pack 3 because that's going to have all the hot fixes you need to cure this problem. So then you can still use Microsoft Update or the basic Windows Update tool, whichever makes you happy. That should be it. But if any of you out there have suggestions as to what might be ailing Matthew's machine or better ways of isolating SVC host.exe problems, we beg, we plead, we ask quite politely. Email us, taxilla at revision3.com. 
And for all you watching, we live on your questions, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com, tech help, product reviews, how-tos, you ask us, we'll do it, but we need those emails. So don't be shy, send them in at techzilla at revision3.com, and even better, send us in a video question so we can see your pearly whites on screen. Remember, load them up to the YouTubes and send us a link. No attachments, please. It's hard on our email servers, and we won't even look at them. So there. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. You can find out more details on the site. Do us a favor. Be sure to check out the revamped Internet Superstar featuring the endearing antics of its host, Martin Sargent. He's brilliant. He's enlightening. He's usually actually carrying a bottle of Maker's Mark, which is a sight <laughs> in and of itself. Each episode, Martin and his guests share with you the secrets of how they became the next Internet Superstar. And don't forget, not only is Internet Superstar new and improved, it's also five days a week. It's short, it's fast. You should check it out right now. Revision3.com slash Internet Superstar and get your laugh on. Oh, Gator, we hardly knew ye. So sad. Well, thanks so much for watching us, you guys. <laughs> We're Patrick still here. Gordon. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Bye. We got here is an amazing collection of knives. You folks at home looking for an investment opportunity? Forget about Wall Street. We've got solid stainless steel hardware. 127 lockbacks available. <laughs> I'm just nodding. Just incredibly interesting. This week's peak, peak, peak. This week's peak. This week, let's take a peek at Sysoft Center Light. Like pulling teeth from an angry porcupine.